Hi guys, this is Mega Man Dragonoid, and as you probably can see, we're playing. Uh... Oh, freaking shit! I forgot. Sorry. Give me a moment. I forgot to turn it on. Kind of used to it. Uh, it's not never be used for that. Sorry. But yeah, we're back playing. Well, uh, Ace Attorney Miles Edward Investigations, if I'm saying it correct. Did I say it correctly? Or did I say it wrong? Say it again. Well, Ace Attorney uh, Miles Edward Investigations. Yeah, you said yeah. it right. Okay. I'm together with, uh, as you probably hear, Justin and also Shira with us. How's it going, guys? Also, I found this real weird. I noticed something with his hands, like the entire time. His hand Somebody is all... placed. Somebody yeah. placed the crime scene. That's yeah. Funny. Hand is all black down here. See? Oh, wait, it's yours. <laughs> <clears throat> His hand is all black down here, see? I wonder what it could be. Hmm. If you look closely, buzzing pattern resembles an ink stain. Stain? Huh. Ah, an ink stain? And ink stain. Yes, usually you get. I usually get inks on my own hand when I use my feather pen. I never get that. A feather pen? I've never seen one before. Sure, you aren't just making it up, pal. Sarah, cause of death was being from a shot, correct? That's what we think, but it's hard to tell with him lying face down. Devitt is bad enough, but it is really a lamel that someone tried to hide the truth. Um, are you sure they were trying to hide something? I can't confirm Mr. Riles' cause of death with his body positioned like that. That, that, that I would like you. I'd like to examine the bodies in further detail if possible. Davis, you're not able to form the theory with them on the way they are. I believe an examination of the bodies is vital to find their perfect evidence, don't you? <laughs> I suppose you have a point. Well, hurry up and get on with it. Yes, get on with it. Lobby. Yes, sir. We are taking enough photos from the of the scene, sir. <clears throat> and there you have it. Dot 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 dot. Do you not approve? Of course not. What? Investigation of the crime scene is the work of a detective. So don't touch a thing! Hey, big fella, turn over the body for me, will you? Oh, okay. <coughs> Please forgive me, Mr. Faraday, sir. Come, show, do not get emotionally involved! Remember, you're a detective! Yes, sir. Understood, sir. I won't rest until I inspect every suspicion. Looking nook and cranny. Cranny. That. Something in his breast pocket. It's a fortune pen. Fountain pen. Fountain pen. Yeah. Fountain oh, pen, sorry. Hey, you know, I always keep the pencil behind my ear.
It's because Detective Bat is always telling me you should always write your name on everything you own. Yeah, somehow you do strike me quite a forgettable individual. There's a knife wood in his chest here, see? Oh wait, that's yours. Sorry! Did it again! <laughs> it's okay, bro. There's a... I wonder if the wound matches the knife as Ryle is holding. Huh. Yeah? <laughs> Yes, sir. Prioritizing now, sir. Make it quick. From the look of things, one could deduce Nightmare is what uh, is holding is is what killed Mr. Faraday. Mr. Faraday is holding the gun in his right hand. That's the one Mr. Rell got blown away by, right? Labby, your answer! Y yes, sir! We found that the back let's take markings to match the gun. Oh, uh, ballistic markings are, um... Are the fugitive... <laughs> Figurative fingerprints of a, a gun leaves on a bullet when it fires. Every gun leaves its own illicit ballistic markings. Therefore, or by looking at the markings on a bullet, you can tell which gun it came from. Yeah, that's it. Uh, of course. I, I already knew all about that, pal. You are better off going back to the academy. Eek! Uh, come on, sir. Come me some slack, will ya? So the bullet that was fired from the gun was about Miss Rao. Shot in the chest. Take some guts to fire a gun, a gun in the courthouse. I mean, I've been a detective for a whole week, and I still haven't fired a single round yet. There are, aren't any burn marks on the club, on his clothes. That means. Wait, burn marks? A round grows all from very hot as it's discharged from it from a firearm. Therefore, burn marks are usually left when a shot is fired from point blank range. Ergo, must well have been shot from at least a yard or two away. Okay. You sure do know a bunch of neat stuff for your age, pal. Apparently this detective has much common knowledge as your everyday's recipient. Let us now try to understand how the two men died. First, Miss Faraday took the gun. Now from the today's trial evidence. And he aimed the gun at Miss Rao and fired. However, Ms. Wall well managed to grab the knife and cut Miss Faraday while being shot. The two men fell together when they stood. There's my theory in any case. <laughs> what a crazy way to go. Still, something about that explanation just seemed to be right. 
Hmm, I believe I now have a firmer grasp on what's happened here. I don't, I don't feel it. Whoa! What is the deck deck that comes to you? My TV at home is so tiny compared to this one, sir. How? Sorry, how? <laughs> yeah, what well, is And perhaps you should preserve a more normal sized television like this one. Ooh, let me see here. Wow, this thing is huge. Mighty huge. What is it doing? Oh, wow. We are not going. We are not going watching SpongeBob Scrap here. And way too noisy. Yeah, easy one, Scurvy. Don't touch it. You will get fingerprints all over it! <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> but, but, I didn't touch it. Restorvation of the currency is a foundation of detective work! <sighs> I need to get used to that! Foundation, huh? Sounds like something Rookie here needs to shore up on. The UV has been left on. <laughs> there it goes again. Why are you looking at me like that? It wasn't me. I didn't touch anything. Gumshoe, do you know what will happen to you if you touch something again? Right? I won't touch anything. I won't even go anywhere near the TV, sir. Don't even look at it! <laughs> and you, get back to your investigation, alright? I was planning to do so anyway. Ah, oh, but I wanna watch SpongeBob! SpongeBob SquarePants, SpongeBob SquarePants, SpongeBob <laughs> SquarePants! This is confirmed. <laughs> There are some plastic bags stacked up on the table. There's a tea set too, but there seems to be... There doesn't seem to be any sign of the disturbance. Yeah, the table's all neat and tidy. Maybe they were super quiet in the scuffle? Party. After all, I didn't hear anything from out in the hallway, you know. Maybe the plastic bags are scared on the floor, uh, throwing us off. You already know this. We have logic. Okay, we have logic mode. Go ahead, bro. Okay. Did you examine the bullet wound, by the way? Excuse me. Yeah, we did. 
But I can check again. Yeah, I did oh, yeah, check this. Did. Yeah. Okay, the so only thing I mode. didn't check was the knife. Like Miss Freddy, it was stabbed with this knife that Miss Raoul is holding. Ouch! What's wrong, Detective? <laughs> My stomach started to hurt from just thinking about being stabbed. Just keep your mind on the case, alright? Now we got everything. Alright, so you go into logic mode and connect ink stain with fountain pen in the pocket. Check and mate. The spudgy on Faraday's hand. I wonder if it might be the ink from his fortune fountain pen. Ooh, let's ask the lab guy. Detective Gumshoe. I confirm that the substances on Mrs. Faraday's hand is the ink from his fountain pen. I say, good work. Uh, you know I've always wanted to say that, even if it was just one time in my life. If Mr. Faraday wrote with his fortune pen with his left hand, I think Fair assumed he was left-handed. It appears that Faraday his pen is very important to our case as well. Okay, if you say so, pal. Got it. All right, now now you connect. Let's see, you have to connect a neat and tidy table with plastic bags. There's a very tidy, tidy pile of plastic bags on the table, and yet a portion of them wouldn't end up scattered on the floor as well. Not likely that the ones on the floor were knocked over during the struggle. In case might be not, not the other explanation as how they got there. Uh, another reason? I believe it's possible that the blood on the side of the bag is related somehow. Eek! Get that blood away from me, pal! Look there, Gamshu. Whose blood is this on the back? Uh, hold on. Let me ask the lab guy. Alright, please hurry. Wait till you get a load of this, pal. It's Mr. Faraday's. Oh, and the technician said they didn't find anything else on or in the bag, either. Hmm, it would appear that the bag is a very important piece of evidence. Okay, if you say so, I'll leave it in your hands, pal. I guess there's not much left to investigate, huh? They really did kill each other. No, we can't conclude that quite yet. This is something that I find very peculiar here. Theories that simply kill the one each other is too simplistic in this case. In fact, there's actually a contradiction that showed there's another possibility. No way, pal. Really? <laughs> I suppose I will just have to show you the conflict in this crime scene. The left-handed gun. Yeah, while he's holding it with his right. Hmm. This part is somehow connected to any of the evidence I hold. Well, his fountain pen. Okay, that was weird.
Now we come face to face with the contradiction I spoke of. Is this. Clear day is, uses left hand to write fountain pen. There you go, he is left handed. Yeah, the ha handgun is in right hand. Don't you find it odd that the left handed Miss Faraday would hold gun in his right hand? That, the lady and gentlemen, it's the great contradiction hunting this crime scene. Hey, you're right, pal. That does seem kind of strange. But how could something like that happen? Checks add up some one conclusion and one alone. Someone else put the gun in Miss Faraday's hand after he died. Someone else? Plastic bags are scattered on the floor. The gun in the wrong hand. Sense the presence of a shattering figure behind this case. There is a file intended who is serious about keeping the truth from us. Investigation complete. September 10th, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Ladies and gentlemen, this is courtroom number number two. <laughs> I could help it. Uh, dear. <laughs> Autopsy report. Hello? Is it possible that Mr. Rao survived for a short time after he was shot? However, Mr. Fade died instantaneously from his stabbing. Interesting. Somebody's still <laughs> tired, yeah. Wake yeah. up! But some some makeup! It looks like we know now know everything we need to know about this case. Are you sure we know everything? Of oh, course! The in incident began with Mr. Fardy attempted to get his revenge. The prosecutor went into rage of being accused and tried to kill the defendant. But the defendant fought back and they ended up killing each other. Ta -da! It's all very clear and simple. There is absolutely no margin for doubt. Do you really believe that would be the truth? <laughs> Are you saying that just because I figured out the truth before you? That you don't want to believe it's true? Ugh. It's alright if you disagree with my argument, then prove me wrong. Well, if there are any contradictions to be found, that is. Don't worry, I will. Fight! Fight! Fight. death was in Tentronos. Well, Mr. Rell survived it for a short time. Obvious that Mr. Fade died after he shot Mr. Rao? And Mr. Rao, while on the brink of death, saw Mr. Fade's knife and stabbed him. Those aren't facts of this case. Miss Faraday's death was insane. Danger. 
É, é, é. Instant, instantaneous. Instantaneous. We must have attacked first. Logic and false resolution. You heard it wrong. Okay, so I first look here if it theory. Okay, tell me. Uh. Okay. <laughs> you have to <laughs> press on statement three. You believe that the dying Miss Riles stole the knife from Miss K? I became desperate as he did not want to die. Human beings can do some amazing things when they are put to the test. So, two men struggled. And in the end, Mr. Rell was able to grab the knife and stab Mr. Farthing. The messy condition of this room is a testament to their struggle. Can you really say that is perfect? You in insert your name? Nothing, however, I can let you say it slide by f without further inquiry. One must be clear and precise, so if you send that statement to her testimony, I Okay, so um, you present Detective Gonshu's testimony at this new statement. Objection! The two me men were fighting. Their struggle wouldn't really cause quite a <sighs> bit of a noise. However, Detective Gumshoe testified that he heard absolutely nothing. You place too much faith in that detective's testimony, you know. But, for the sake of argument, let's say there wasn't a fight. How oh, then did Mr. get his hands on life? Thirdly Bag was sitting there right here on lobby number two. And I'd imagine that perhaps Ralph saw a chance and took it out of some point. This the chance when he saw the opportunity and took the knife from the back. And then Mr. Farday shot Mr. Rell after being stabbed? There's, there's something... Yes, yeah, something is off. Yeah, there's no burn marks then. Hey, something doesn't add up. Ba-ba-ba-da-ba. 
Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> healing. Really? Simply not possible for Mr. Fairy to have shot after being stabbed. Tell me. Crime scene. Uh, it says crime scene, scene notes. Crime scene notes? Mm -hmm. Present the crime scene notes. Oh, there. I was searching. Going to the con corner, corner uh, reports, report. Miss Perde died in meaning he died immediately after one being stabbed by the knife. There you go, you couldn't possibly have have fired the gun after that. Got me But of course. Well then, if the report is correct, then sh there is only one correct explanation. If you were that Mr. Rell attacked first, then Mr. Fade, who died instantly, would have been able to kill Mr. Rell. Therefore, Mr. Rell must have stopped Mr. Fade after he was shot. They were both died. That. It's the only explanation that makes logical sense. And getting your opponent ideas in order to prove your own theory. I see you have been studying, Francesca. What ex explain it to you as simply as possible? Foolishness propose a foolish theory that only foolish fools. <laughs> That's four. Number four. I'm trying to hide four. <laughs> I'm naive of you to believe there's only your opinions are valid. Didn't, still expecting to discover the truth that the crime scene was you. Francesca, you still got a ways to go. What are you talking about? Are you saying there's a flaw in my logic? Faraday died in the fact that he did was giving a rise to prediction scene. Prediction is the crime scene is the order the bodies fell. Let me get this straight. What you're arguing is this. Faraday took the gun from the back and shot Mr. Ryle. Wound from Mr. Ryle found an opportunity to take the knife and strike back. When being stabbed, Mr. Faraday died on the spot and Ms. Riley died after. After. If that's the case, then how do you explain this? Take a good look at the order of which the bodies are piled up. Faraday body is lying on top of Mr. Rouse, therefore, Rouse must have died for Miss Faraday. Uh, the same boat! The same boat is like. Uh. <laughs> impossible! Yes, I agree that it seems strange, no matter what angle you approach it from. It means the real mystery behind this crime. Objection! Objection. No, not so fast, Miles Edgeworth. What now? I simply think that you ought to think a bit more outside the box. And that's even clearer you now that the incident started with Mr. Faraday's murderous intent. Sure, buzz back quickly. So she, uh, so she is some kind of a bounce ball. <laughs> boing, 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 boing. Vision won't be enough this time. I'm going to take some very effective evidence. Here we go. Round two. 
Ah, oh, legit. What happened? Part two. That Mr. Farday's body fell on top of Mr. Rally's. Come on. Give me a moment. The two bodies fell into a pile. Which indicates that they attacked each other at the same time. It really doesn't matter in the sight except they fell the opposite order. There's no difference, that's right, but it's absolutely correct. Indeed, because if the gun is shot at Mr. Rao, he also has burn marks on him, which are not true. Knife is the only thing that was close to Mr. Faraday's body. There's something going on. All I have to do is find the hole in our logic. I do, I can present her How is that proof to contradiction? Hit me, bro! Alright, so you press on statement 3 Gantry Hold it. What do you mean by they attacked each other at the same time? Mr. Faye had the two different weapons in his hands he made you attack Mr. Brown while holding both the knife and the revolver, and then... After Mr. Faraday fired the gun, Mr. Brown grabbed the knife as he was failing and stabbed Mr. Faraday. That is how Mr. Brown went up at the bottom of Mr. Faraday on top. Close range, that is more than possible. Yes, it is possible, but... Well, if you have any other ideas... Then show me what you got! Oh, I will. That, uh, that extent, I would like you to... ...send what you just said to your testimony. <laughs> I don't see the point of that, but as you please. Okay, bro. Okay, so... Uh, you present either the crime scene notes or the handgun on the... New uh, statement? ...thing that she says at the moment now, yeah. Objection! So you believe they killed each other at close range. Sorry, but that's not possible. Just as it is written in the crime scene notes. The fire of the gun handgun doesn't leave a gunpowder burner on Miss Valley's clothes. Therefore, Miss Valley the gun must have been separate from a distance at least two or three yards. This is good music! Yes, this is by far the biggest contradiction. Two bodies are piled up on each other, yet the gun fired from a distance. With there no being a chance to around move far after being shot, at least only one possible explanation. One, two, three, four. Damn, not a record yet. Record was five, right? Was it yeah, six? I think so. Leave the foolish line of foolish uh, far from your own. 
Bring me foolish fool! If I'm not right, then who was it in that made the first move with the intent to kill her? Who? Person that attacked first was the murderous intent. That will be. Neither of them. How did I knew? Here in this room, contradiction appear no matter which man we claimed attacked first. Thus, that there can be only one explanation. There was a third person here. But how and where? It was the, th the third person who killed both Mr. Faraday and Mr. Rao. Set their bodies up to make it look like they doubled like a double murder. Third person is the real culprit. Mount Etchwa. There's just one thing you're missing. Evidence, correct? Exactly. Everything you said up until now is nothing but a story played out in your mind. However, this is where the real test begins. Can you prove that there was a third person involved in this crime? The window. The window, was it? Of course. The third person was truly here. The fact of the glaring contradiction. The proof is that this has been that I made look like they killed each other. I will present the lab final piece of the puzzle not yet in place. The evidence that proves the third person is involved. It's the plastic bags, actually. Yeah, the plastic bags were kind of weird. That it was the only thing out of place. Got him in Faraday's hand, and the plastic bags is blood on it. There are two items pointing to the presence of a third person. How? Oh. How so? Call Detective Gumshoe's testimony. I was in the hallway the whole time, but I didn't hear a single peep of a struggle. If there was a re if there wasn't a struggle in this room, there shouldn't be any plastic bags on the ground. Meaning that someone else deliberating scattered them around. Do you not see the possibility in this? It's regarding the gun of the for the moment. There's a high possibility the blood spare a knife used on a person. Corporate held the knife in plastic bag around. Should have used the bag to catch any blood scattered from when they drew the knife. They are spending a few more plastic bags around, mixing the blood on in with them. Reaching the room looked like it like there was between the two they were able to conceal their presence what just happened uh the game is freaking there we go it's fixed fucking <laughs> oh the there was something going on something glitched Yeah, your turn, Shira. E. Mm. 
Look like we still got a long way to go in this investigation. Yes. Objection. Objection. What in the heck? What the heck's up with you, pal? Hello. Mr. Bat, I advise you to place Detective Gumshoe under arrest. What? What? What's the meaning of this? Ha, huh, looks like you're not man enough to discipline your own subordinates. Don't... Don't you dare! That detective claims he was there, standing in front of the door the entire time. But I have an own good authority that it was all a giant lie. He went to get some coffee. <laughs> no. Issue. I ask you to please explain this last statement. His honor explain him himself. I saw it with my own eyes, I tell you. During the recess, there was a period of time when there was no one in the hallway. What? See, Mr. Bat. So I ask you, why would a detective who is supposedly doing his job the whole time want to fabricate such a lie Gumshoe, did you? Did you kill Faraday? <coughs> no, no! Of course not, sir. That's harsh. Woman. It appears that the only who set this whole crime scene up is that detective. Which basically renders his testimony a complete lie, the whole invalid. It looks like your perfect logic has just come trembling down, Miles. Yeah. I was in the hallway the whole time, but I didn't hear a single peep of struggle. That's a. Statement's really a lie? Detective Gumshoe, you're now a suspect in the murder of two men! Now spit out the truth! Or so help me! I, I haven't lied to anyone, so honest. I really, really was there. I was in the hallway the whole time. Detective Bad, I ask you that to please do not act without my permission. After all, I'm the one that's heading up in the investigation, am I not? Don't talk like you know what's going on, boy!
All I want is this navigation to run perfectly. Can this only wish of the discipline for fun karma after all? Therefore, before you take the, take the Gumshu into custody, I'd like to set up a record straight on something. And what is that? Hmm. Maybe I should ask the Gumshu about. Okay, hang on. Uh, so. Oh, sorry, Raven. Uh, motive for the murders. I suppose one thing I like to clarify is the gumshoe motive committing this crime. Motive, huh? Gumshoe, you got a grudge against Faraday or anything? No, no, sir, not me. Not a single bad thing against Mr. Faraday, sir. Is that a fact? Objection. Objection. You really have a problem with lying, don't you, Detective Gumshoe? I'm telling you, I am not lying. The judge is lying. The more unnatural you act, the more suspicious you become, you know. If you want a motive at truth, I have one for you right here. Could you please share it with us? However, before warning that I won't hesitate to object to any lights or a fancy. Because I'm interested in this, this perfect explanation. <laughs> yes. On. <sighs> ah. Fine. You amuse me, so I humor you with a little courtroom practice. Damn. Who's motive? It was about a week ago. I saw the detective got chewed out by a livid party in front of the Fenson... Nah. Precent. 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 He stood there super pale as Mr. Fardy yelled, That's the celerity gun for you, you nitwit! A brand new detective suddenly getting his salary cut. That's the reason enough for a grudge. Well, how's that for a perfect explanation? You totally misunderstand me, pal. No matter how mad I get, I could never hold a grudge. Quiet! Can't trust anything you say! Getting the chills. Not this Danny. time. Hmm. So. There's nothing wrong with the pose. Hey, there's some gaps in our logic that need filled in. You perfect next minute. May not be so perfect at all. Hit me, bruh. Okay, so... Uh, you have to press on statement 5 um, and raise an objection. The... 4. Hold it. Oh, your explanation perfect. Unfortunately for you, it's not just not the uh, up to my standards. Oh, is there something you want me to clarify in that case? What should I do? Should I raise an objection? Alright, what if I clear this one thing up for me? 
Uh, motive for killing Mr. Bell. I understand Gunner the potential motive for killing Faraday. However, what about his motive for killing Mr. Val? Hmm. His motive was killing Val? Like I would know. <laughs> if there was no clear motive for both of the murders, then I doubt this incident would occur. Something you agree? Oh. Is there anyone else who might have a grudge against either of the two men? Or should we look into that ourselves? Oh, in that case, I have absolutely no idea. What? What about the impossible? She must know something. <laughs> that came out of nowhere. Can you please not glare at me like that? It makes me laugh. <laughs> yeah. Okay then. I didn't even do anything and she's already laughing away. Well, anyway, the way I see it, as long as he had a motive to kill one of the two, that crime would have played out of the way it did anyway. Uh. Oh, would you care to explain your logic? This time, please try to provide a truly perfect explanation. you both just quiet for just a second <laughs> oh well i guess i'll just have to explain it to you kids yourself a kid aren't you you round two fight fight motive to kill one man there's no one out there with a motive to kill both mr fare and Mr. Rell. Are you really half an established that someone had a grudge against one of the two men? Mr. Rell, who happened to be there, became a witness to Mr. Farday's murderer. Therefore, he was killed out of recency and set up to look like they had killed each other. Wonder if that's really true. There's no one out there to grudge against both of them. We should take another hard look at the evidence for, for this morning case. KG8 incident and people are calling it involving the capacity staff member and who both wounded up as subjects, suspects in the case. Someone else who I'm overlooking is somehow related to them. Yeah, we do. I have a feeling you're just going to give me the answer. Uh, you have to present the KG8 incident at the first statement. Objection! It's you. I believe there is someone who you overlooked in making your statement. Or rather, because you rather not bringing this person up. Yeah. We're looking for someone with a reason to kill both Faraday and Mr. Rowell. I think I can at least one person that fits the bill. <laughs> <laughs> he was the suspect in the original KG-8 and a member of the Kobe LCD staff, Mr. Manny Koshin. 
Aww. That's right, the very man who came to visit you early out of... Out in the hallway. Aww. Man who killed a member of the Kozio assembly staff, Mr. Rao. The man who was the lead prosecutor of the KG... Then Mr. Faraday. Are you telling me that the cousin will have no reason at all to kill both of these men? Well, I suppose he might have a reason or two. You come for me, pal. Maybe you're not such a bad guy after all. Don't get ahead of yourself. You're still a suspect making... Make no mistakes about that. The perfect evidence, the perfect testimony, they are the only things I wish to hold. But I didn't do it! <laughs> you will stay on the my authority and investigate Mr. Many Courage for me. Remember, I will not be very forgiving for any of the. You want to investigation caution? You just be wasting your time. And why is that? Caution was up in the viewing gallery watching the trail, or so I was told. Every cop in the place has been keeping an eye on the guy since he arrived. And the only real suspect we have is still Detective Gumshoe. Bro, how much is a yard? How much is a yard? Yeah. In like kilometers? Kilometers, meters, etc. Does not go for miles. That's confusing me. Gosh! Oh! Golly! It says it's 0. 0.9144 in meters. That's one kilometer. So the shot wasn't made in this room. But somewhere else in the building. Correct. Or maybe it was made outside. Because of the window. Hmm, that's what I'm thinking. Yep. I suppose so. I'd like to roll at that though, but we'll see. No way! Come on, Detective Bad, you've got to believe me, sir! It is possible that he got shot no, by really another... Not in that hallway the whole time, sir! You kind of cut in no for Shira. Go ahead, Shira. Was... It was actually that the gun was shot, but it was all from a thing, so... That bullet is somewhere else. Uh, possible. Uh, well, yeah, and if we remember, well, the other person got shot outside. So the judge said he heard a popper. Yeah. Well, Gumshoe heard a gunshot. Yeah, po yeah, a demer could be a demer from a sniper, well, perhaps. True, but if Gumshoe heard a gunshot and he heard a popper. that the judge is uh, uh, into this case. He could all be behind this by his master plan. Indeed, maybe it's a different judge or a wrong judge. Maybe uh, disguised as a ju judge. Because it is weird if he heard a popper, but guns you heard a gunshot. Well, at least he did hear it. But if the a yard or two, so like two kilometers, she must be shot from far. I never took a single step into this room, sir. Okay, then you are safe. 
there was someone else who passed through the hallway? <clears throat> then why should I believe you didn't do it? Incredibly foolish detective standing right in front of the crime scene all by himself. Mm. It, it's a good as a confession of guilt. I have to admit, it's a bit strange. Most crimes are fabricating some sort of lie to escape their crimes. That's the detective really want to prove that he innocent. You think he will at least try to offer up a space at, while on duty or like like oh. Come on Gumshoe! Time for your interation! <clears throat> Man, I got the cute uh, girls here. Oh, my God. One more and come on. Detective Bad. Uh, I'll do it. I'll tell you. I didn't. Now, Petra, I will go ahead and report this to Papa. And that is, they say, is that. Right, everyone? Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! <laughs> it has to be the same judge. No, can't be. Suppose we should both be getting back to our real jobs now, huh? <sighs> Before we do, Miss Yu, there is something I'd like to speak with you about. What is it? To have set those two men up, as you like they all killed each other. One thing I can't forgive is Kerrige or death. Oh. You want to think about? Current case of the murder. I forgot the word. The cold oh, opium embassy staff member. Thank you. I heard that the people have begun calling it the second KG agency. Only among you law enforcement's ties. And what about it? I'd like for you to tell me everything you know about the original KG agency. I'm afraid I can't help you. I don't know anything beyond what's reported in the papers.
<clears throat> I believe you know much more since you are directly tied to the Gagey incident. I appreciate it if you you stop with the falsest accusations. Baseless outbursts are useless both inside and outside the courtroom, don't you think? I do, but I also know that I do have a leg to stand on here. <laughs> you please stop stopping stop laughing for just one second I'm not going to make any heads <laughs> way like this just going to have to show her exactly how related to the KG incident she is oh. tell me bro present. Um, so it says you have to present the KG incident overview Miss you, I believe that I have proof of your connection to the KG-8 incident. <sighs> that fell in your proof? Very well then. Why don't you tell me exactly how I am related to the KG-8 incident? Through the victim. <sighs> A connection to the KG in to the victim. <laughs> victim name is CCU. I don't know that she had the same last name as you. You really still tell me that a straight face that who aren't related to this case. <laughs> But we are not related. What? Just kidding. You asked that question with such a serious look on your face that I could help but is <laughs> uh, you I ask you to please tell me the truth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I tell you everything I know. Uh, yeah, we can get to you. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, guess it. The one who reported our smuggling activities of the Armano group was my sister, Sissy Yu. I thought. And she was killed right before she was to testify at the impending trail. By Manny Cochin. But because he was tried once and was acquitted, he gets to live out the rest of his Karashi life completely carefree. All because of a lack of evidence. <sighs> now, I hear that the evidence to convert him did exist. What? I heard it from Mr. Fade himself after Mr. Cochin trail was over. Apparently, a man in black made off with the most important piece of evidence. And the evidence had been tampered with? It just like the criminal to do something like that. The smuggling ring being run out of the Amano group by one of his secretaries. 
They bailed Mr. Coach and out turns out they were and leech each other all, all along. How big was smuggling ring? Was it a large operation? I don't really know. Which means it's why I wanted to become the lead defense. Well, in this case, that people are calling the second KG8 incident. But I haven't learned anything new at all. I was probably expecting too much, I know. And you know this case has nothing to do with the smuggling ring? I don't know what to think. I did Mr. Kaya want to earlier. Actually, he came to watch the trail. Apparently, he only found out that I was a defense lawyer. And this case, after he arrived, <clears throat> he figured he should say hi. And the other thing, looks like you couldn't resolve anything this time either. Too bad. That's supposed to mean. <laughs> oh boy, stop with the scary face already! <laughs> um, fine. Really, I gave him a good save across the face. The way she talks about slapping him. That's a way kind of creepy. Um. But. As it just that Mr. Bot said, he's not related to the double murderer. I asked around the people in the gallery claimed that he was in his seat the entire time. Talk about cruel fate. Well, this is all, this is about all I know. Haha, <laughs> sorry. Guess I wanted much help, huh? That's not true. Sorry I made you recall such a painful time in your... <laughs> Actual, you really are too serious for your own good. You really need to learn to relax. Why wouldn't want you to die of stress, would we? Thank you for your advice, but there's no need to worry. I work my own way and I will catch a criminal in my own way. Well, you see. <laughs> Look at you with your gay face on, ready to go! <laughs> I am not making such a face! Did you know, laughter is the best medicine. Bad, best medicine, Edgeworth. Don't you get tired of making serious face all the time? I'm. I'm charged with making sure that all criminals of this world are found guilty. I have no for laughter. <clears throat> there you go, making that face again. Oh well. I got to be get going. I still have a few loose ends I need to tie up. Bye bye. AG8 is our gum shoe flying light dances faces far from over or, or not that very one leading my patient I swear to you, your honorable name, or my name isn't Miles Edgeworth. Yep, and this is where we're gonna end off, guys. If you like the content so far, feel free to leave a follow, or subscribe, or comment below with your prefer of choice. You can also go to twitch.tv says Mega Man Dragon Out while I'll be streaming. You can also go to deep.com says Mega Man Dragon Out while I'll be posting my art. And that's basically it, guys. So, yeah. You can go to Shiraz or Justin's social medias if they want to say it. Go ahead.
Sarah, you can go first if you like. Well, if you want to go to check out on uh, DeviantArt, you just go to Sea with a Hedgehog. For YouTube, you go searching for Princess Sira. And my my YouTube is just Parodies Man. My Twitch is just Parodies Minor, and my DeviantArt is Doctor Chester the First. Get an officer. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And there you go. So we all see you next time at this place at this time. Have a nice, nice week. Smart Dragonites. Peace.